Welcome to the Fiber Girl Show, a podcast committed to connecting communities and accelerating businesses through fiber optics. Fiber optics. Now, here's your host, Tanya Bohannon. Welcome to the Fiber Girl Show podcast. I'm so excited to have my special guest, Tom Hodson of Total Cable Solutions. Welcome, Tom. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. We've got some fun stuff to talk about. Well, not everyone thinks it's fun, but you and I definitely will. We're talking about data center stuff. Oh boy, my favorite. <laughs> Before we get started, give me a little bit of history about you and your background. And what do you love about working in the data center? Wow, lots of cover there. So yeah, I actually started back in the IT industry around 1991. This was before the internet, right? Started out in uh, mainframe operations, went into software development, uh, even managed a data center for about four years. And then uh, Y2K hit, for those of us that remember that. And uh, we thought the world was going to end. It didn't. Uh, After the Y2K event, I kind of transitioned into more uh, engineering and architecture type roles in the IT, both in software and hardware, both mainframe and open systems. I've been involved with storage management software, and I'd say for the last uh, about 15 years, been focused on data center connectivity, specifically structured cabling. What do you think are some of the biggest changes you've seen in technology or in the data center over the last five to 10 years? Wow, a lot. You know, the one thing that you have to get used to if you're in the IT industry, and I tell this to young people that are considering the IT industry, is you have to be able to accept change because things change at a pace that uh, you would not expect and uh, a lot of other jobs do not entail. That involves reading manuals and and, uh, having updates, you know, not every three years, but even every year. Uh, The biggest changes that I have seen, you know, everybody talks about the microchips and the connectivity. They talk about uh, the footprints. From a cabling perspective, it's the, the biggest changes have been density. So as we have entered this world of 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 keywords like hyperscale and others, and they mean a lot of things on their own, but in behind the scenes, uh, there is a lot more compute, network, and storage connectivity that is having to drive, you know, every request from a smartphone and from a workstation. So that then translates into cabling. So in the data center becomes a bit of a jungle very quickly, uh, unless you have some plans and ways of organizing the cables so that they can be moved and ads and changed uh, on a regular basis and documented. So those are some of the challenges that I've seen big time. So I would say structured cabling is one of the biggest changes. I mean, uh, when you, you know, outside of the hardware and everything else, now from a a data center perspective, data centers have uh, both grown and shrank at the same time. Most of us are familiar with the typical data center that resides in a, at a corporate headquarters, as an example. And the trend over the last several years is those corporate data centers have actually uh, shrank quite a bit. And a lot of that is due to workloads being distributed throughout the United States to put the compute power closer to the end user requests. Uh, a good example of this would be like your Facebook and your Googles and Apples and everything else. So if you say something into Siri and Siri has to look something up, they don't want that to travel that request clear over to another country. If that request on the network can be answered through servers sitting in a local town, uh, that's much more efficient and, and ends up being a much quicker and faster response time to the end user. Well, it's interesting when you were talking about, you know, how we remember data centers years ago when I started out in the industry, we had to, uh, I worked in an auditing department and we had to take all of our paperwork to the big uh, data center office where I think that uh, main computer was as big as this whole office, right? Oh, yeah. And everything had to be cold. And so it's interesting how we have better service, but everything's so much smaller. It is. And whenever you miniaturize things, there's always trade-offs, both in security, which is a big realm as well. It's harder to track and and, uh, look at these things when they are so small, sitting as a bit. I mean, even hardware drives and solid state drives are so dense now that uh, you have to secure them as well as uh, attach them to the network and get fast access to them and everything else. So that's that's a huge growing area. I totally agree. <laughs> well, now here we go. We are on our way to 5G. 
Oh boy. How do you feel 5G will impact the infrastructure of the data center? I think significantly, and we're already starting to see this quite honestly. If you kind of rewind a little bit and look at how the 4G rolled out years ago, that was a massive infrastructure change for the cellular side of things. So you had uh, cell towers all of a sudden springing up all over the place. And, you know, it took probably five, six, seven years for it to be robust and have the coverage to make a major impact. The, the thing that's really intriguing with 5G that is that, number one, it started deploying this year. Okay, so it's not a future that we're talking about. We're talking about something that is coming. And I think if you look at how it will roll out, I think instead of it being a five to seven year uh, rollout, I think we'll start to see the real benefits of 5G and its peak maybe in about three years. So from a data center perspective, what does that mean? Well, if you look at 4G versus 5G, you're talking anywhere from 10 to 100 times the data traffic that it can support. And without getting into all the, you know, the technological benefits of 5G, if you just look at that statement, that's a lot of additional data at the edges of your network that are going to come back to a network core somewhere. So every company that is, that is attached to the internet and has a web store or informational type websites, or even like an e-commerce as well, are going to have to size up that capacity and start to prepare for it. Uh, We've seen companies that are already doing that, in fact. So that's a smart thing to do. The problem is that a lot of the corporations with the smaller footprints now are adding this capacity to deal with the 5G challenge by moving a lot of this out to co-locations. The co-locations are well-equipped to add capacity Uh, both on the compute, storage, and the network side very quickly. So a company can kind of pay as they grow without having to do it in-house and then run out of space. So 5G is going to be a big uh, boom for the co-locations out there. And, uh, you know, again, you already start to see it. I'm Tanya Bohannon, and this is the Fiber Girl Show podcast, and I'm here with Tom Hodson of Total Cable Solutions, and we're talking about the data center. You know, it makes me laugh. Some people say data, some people say data. What 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 is it really? I think it depends on what side of the the, the pond you're. <laughs> yeah, you know, whether yeah. it's Europe or U.S. But tomato, it's all, tomato. It's all the same. It's all the same. Oh, you were talking about storage. Will there be a need for more on-site storage then? Do you see customers using more of a cloud base with 5G, or do you think they will gear up with more storage on-site? I think most of the the storage growth, quite honestly, is going to be cloud-based. And I say that because most of the storage that companies are choosing to keep in-house at their corporate data center are typically the stuff that they have intellectually, uh, there's IP or intellectual property associated with that. It's not the transactional type stuff, and it's more accounting type stuff. So a lot of the web traffic, because you can scale, uh, you can go from X amount of clicks one day to a thousand clicks the next day. That scalability best resides out in the cloud because you have pools of servers, pools of storage, and pools of, of network that can quickly be turned on to handle that demand. So I think the cloud benefits an awful lot from the 5G expansions that are going to occur. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, when we think of the cloud years ago, we never would have even thought about that, right? Where, no. where is the data stored? <laughs> yeah. And in the early days, you know, if you go back a while, I mean, we talked about client server, remember uh-huh, those back in the uh-huh, day? Uh-huh. And the cloud is just a modern day version of client server. It's, it's how much of the compute is done locally and, and the storage as well versus uh, remotely somewhere out there. Will they ever run out? I mean, I have an email account, right? I've never checked it. I must have 30,000 emails, but they just keep storing it. What happens to all that data? Where does it go? Well, and that's that's why it's, uh, you know, you hear about data mining and encryption and uh, dedupe mm-hmm. and all these types <laughs> of technologies out there because there is an awful lot of data. Everything's being captured nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything, everybody buys with a credit card now nowadays versus cash. So when you digitize all of that, it's becoming a bit of a nightmare for a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of companies that will help you yeah. <laughs> either sell you more storage or the software to help manage and prioritize that. Uh, and then, of course, you have a lot of the laws 
with regards to privacy and, and HIPAAs and everything else mm-hmm. in terms of the retention, mm-hmm. emails and everything else. So those are some pretty big challenges. So whenever you start to magnify the amount of storage, it just magnifies the headaches and managing it too. So, you know, when talking about fiber and going to 5G and having to have all this connectivity, uh, obviously we need data centers that are well built and ready to handle all of that. What do you see for the fiber industry, uh, for companies that are implementing with fiber and needing to set up, make sure their data structure is able to handle all of that fast connectivity? That's a good question. And I, I seem to get that question quite honestly, almost weekly. And I think the best answer that I would have today, because it will change, is that as customers are looking to prepare for 5G or just even expansion in general, most corporate networks, uh, whether you're at a co-location or at a, a, a corporate data center that you own, are currently at the edges of the network using 10 gig links, and then back at their core, they're using 40 or 100 gig links, okay? That entails using a certain type of fiber. Those are different. You're talking about a two fiber application versus typically an eight fiber application. And what uh, what we're seeing as folks are looking at refreshes uh, this coming year, they're in budget cycles, right? And looking ahead as to what should I be planning for is the movement from the edges of their network going from 10 gig connectivity to 25 gig connectivity. That can still be done with their existing two fiber infrastructure. In most cases, if they're fairly up to date on their fiber using OM3 or OM4. However, to go at their network core from 40 or 100 gig for their core backbone to be able to support the 400 gig speeds, there often is going to be a change in the fiber trunks and the cables plant to support that. And that's really key. So as you bring in more traffic, think of four lanes uh, on a highway merging with another four lanes. Mm -hmm. And it's headed into downtown as eight lanes. Mm -hmm. That downtown area has to be able to handle those eight lanes. Right. 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 With all the little off ramps. Mm -hmm. And think of that as the network core. And that's uh, something that folks are, it's top of mind today, is preparing for the the new 400 gig links uh, in between their main switches to handle that. Yeah, definitely. Do you see the cost of deployment going down with the increased demand for fiber optic connections? I think there's going to be sufficient reuse, but I think that folks need to, if you're in a data center and you're looking at 5G and expansion and and this 400 gig world that is sitting out there, which will be the next big leap in speeds, that you probably want to budget a little bit more than you have in the past for fiber connectivity. And I'll tell you why. So, Typically, all the surveys the last couple of years is IT budgets uh, tend to be somewhere between 5 and 8% of their expenditures is on cable plant, okay? The one thing that I, I think that's going to be a little bit closer to maybe even 10% now uh, as we look forward. And the reason I say this is because uh, there's been a lot of movement the past two years, and that trend is going to continue to move towards a leaf and spine architecture, And this is uh, basically a two-tier network architecture versus uh, a typical three-tier, okay? And the biggest difference with Leaf and Spine is you have to connect every switch to each other. And so that's additional cabling that is not there in the data center today, okay? And we've seen plenty of those deployments uh, over the past two years, and they seem to be snowballing. And because of that, the backbone has to add additional fibers to support that. And and Leap and Spine is a perfect fit for 400 gig uh, and 5G because it offers some of the same any-to-any connectivity and low latency that 5G is known for. So... We're starting to see that. I would recommend that folks, as they're planning their next couple of years, to factor in an additional 2 or 3% expenditures associated with a fiber backbone. Well, where can businesses go to get help in implementing a high-speed solutions in their data center? There's a lot of folks out there. And certainly, uh, don't be afraid to ask for references. I mean, there's a lot of people that will tell you that they specialize in data center in, in fact, they, they're they not up to de- date necessarily on the latest stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So that's really the key. So if they are familiar with Leaf and Spine and, the, and we're familiar with the Cisco uh, network architecture, mm-hmm. the new one out there, 
then that is a great place to uh, help qualify the ones that are better than others. Is Total Cable Solutions able to help steer people with those kind of answers? We do. And that's actually one of the things that I do in my role and a couple others here as well, Mm -hmm. is to kind of be that trusted advisor to help people make good decisions. It's it's great to go to conferences and see the PowerPoints and hear it in the shows. And it's another thing when you then get back from the conference and you have to develop a plan and give it to management <laughs> and budget for it the next year. Uh-huh. And that's that's often where we're then called in to kind of help and put it in a, in a real world, uh, something they can relate to for their specific data center. Because every data center mm-hmm. is quite different. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of similarities, but every data center has just enough nuances and differences that you can't really just pull one cookie cutter thing out and say, here's the plan. Mm-hmm. How can we connect with you? Do you have a website that we should go to or is there a, an email address you can give us? Sure. Yeah. My email address is simply Tom at Total Cable Solutions with an S dot com. Tom at Total Cable Solutions dot com. That's correct. Great. And so that that's a good place to start. Thank you, Tom, for that. Yep. We're getting ready to close. We've talked a lot about data centers and, and the infrastructure and how to begin or, or the impact that it's going to make out there as we move towards 5G and even 10G and, and we know 40G one day, right? Well, these days. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to be sure to say or let's or, or to talk about before we close? Not that I could think of, no. I think you covered it well. I don't want to steer too off of topic or yeah, anything like yeah. that. No, it's so. all right. Thank you so much, Tom. You've given us all a lot of information to think about. And as we're moving forward into 5G and growing our data centers and, and the solutions for that. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you're listening to this podcast, this is the Fiber Girl Show podcast. I'm Tanya Bohannon, and we would love for you to listen and share, and we'd love to get your feedback. You can email me at Tanya at thefibergirlshow.com. That's Tanya at thefibergirlshow.com. I would love to get your feedback, and if you know of someone or you would like to be a future guest, please feel free to contact me. Thank you again for listening. 